As a fan of ITS games, it's been a disappointing few years. We've had to witness the fall of Blizzard, and beloved franchises such as Command & Conquer have been relegated to nothing more than outsourced, cash-grab mobile games. There was also a feeling that tastes were changing and the industry was moving away from the genre. There's of course the famous story that a $15 mount skin in World of Warcraft generated more revenue for Blizzard than the entirety of all StarCraft II Wings of Liberty sales. Despite the negativity, many developers, large and small, do see an opportunity with the genre and have been working on numerous exciting titles. I think the picture today is far more promising than a couple of years ago, and in this video I'd like to share with you some of the more interesting titles which are due for release in the next year or two, or can be played today in some form via early access or open beta phases. Silica is looking to merge the genres of RTS and first-person shooter in a slick sci-fi setting. There are two distinct factions which are basically the humans and aliens, so very much a Starship Trooper kind of vibes here. In addition to supporting single player, it also supports up to 32 player multiplayer, so games on a grand scale. I would say this mode is somewhat reminiscent of the legendary Half-Life mod known as Natural Selection, and any comparisons to a title like that have to be positive. The game has been in Steam Early Access since 2023, so you can buy the game and begin playing straight away and they are aiming for a full release by the end of 2024. Feedback so far has been mixed to positive, and the general consensus has been that there's some serious optimization required to get the game to run at an acceptable frame rate, and the RTS element needs some serious work. As of right now, the, the only real attraction is playing the first person shooter part of the game. If they do continue to polish this game and they manage to get everything right, then the potential for this 32 player mode is absolutely enormous. It could be a real blast and anything reminiscent of natural selection is something I'll be keeping a very close eye on. No relation to John Woo's 90s action thriller, Broken Arrow is a modern warfare tactical RTS game. Now while the game does have a single player mode, its 5 vs 5 multiplayer setting is by far the more interesting. Boasting gigantic battlegrounds, over 300 distinct units, and then a further 1500 customizations of these, the scale and ambition of this game is breathtaking. Further to this is a scenario editor which supports scripting and allows players to create their own campaigns. The game is scheduled for a late 2024 release, and currently there is a multiplayer open beta, in addition to a closed beta for single player which launched in July of this year. Mana Lords was a passion project started by a solo developer, and this one is really exciting. After being wishlisted by more than 2 million people on Steam, the game finally launched into early access in April of 2024. This game looks absolutely gorgeous, and there's a real emphasis on realism and historical accuracy based on the art and architecture of the late 14th century Franconia. The next big patch promises to port the game into Unreal Engine 5, opening up a host of development possibilities and enhancements, in addition to making the game look even better, which is hard to believe because it looks fantastic right now. A key part of the gameplay is the kind of city building element and you start from a humble humble town, humble couple of houses and you gradually, organically, build this up through gridless building so you can go any way you like off-piste and it deliberately sets a very kind of slow and measured cadence dictated by the seasons and how trade routes emerge and resource collection happens in real time kind of idea. So. It's quite, quite a chill experience. And then there's the contrast of real-time strategy battles which are conducted. So I think it's an oversimplification to say it's just like Total War, but there is that kind of base building and then fighting sort of contrast. I think what sets this game apart so far is definitely the, the attention to detail, the focus on realism, and just the fact you can really tell this is a passion project and the developer cares and listens to feedback. Something rather rare nowadays, sad to say. The game is currently available to buy in early access, and it's undergoing constant development with a series of small patches and then periodic major content patches. I really recommend, of all the titles covered, I think this is one of the standout titles to really keep an eye on. Godsworn is a fantasy RTS set in the real world period of the Northern Crusades of around 1195 AD onwards, where Christians battled largely against pagans. Gameplay-wise, you control a divine hero unit with unique abilities and building options, and essentially you gather followers and worshippers 
and muster an army of mortals and mythical creatures to do your bidding. Your followers then gather resources for you and help to construct cities in your honour. As somebody who loves titles such as Total Annihilation and Warcraft 3, I'm a big fan of this hero unit or commander unit style gameplay. One singular character through which you can build, you can fight and everything flows. The game features single player and co-op campaigns in addition to online PvP. The single player has you playing as the pagans as you try to defend the Christian invasion. Godsworn is available to buy and play on Steam Early Access, and there's also a free playable demo. So far the title has had solid reviews, and I'm looking forward to following its progress. Total Conflict Resistance is a very ambitious project attempting to marry turn-based tactical gameplay with RTS and first-person shooter elements. The first of the three main phases of play is called Strategic Mode, where you focus on a turn-based campaign, managing troop movements, constructing buildings, and focusing on things such as logistics and diplomacy. Next up we have Tactical Mode, which is your bread and butter RTS gameplay. Finally, you can literally participate in the battles from the ground in first person perspective in an FPS style gameplay, but you can also give orders to other troops whilst participating in this mode. So suffice to say this is an extremely ambitious project and there are so many different systems and rules and mechanics to learn as you try to play this game. And one of the, the big sort of concerns is just how much content needs to be created as well in terms of assets, like graphical, things like that, skins. And a recent patch, 0.80, introduced workshop support, allowing users to start creating their own. The game has been on Steam Early Access since April of 2023, and is slated for a full release sometime between 12 and 24 months after this initial date. The game has generally been receiving positive reviews through its various iterations and playtests, and I think the only lingering concern amongst fans seems to be the fact that there's no public developer roadmap. So when we do receive updates, they come as a surprise sometimes and appear a little scattergun. So some people are concerned that maybe the project is lacking focus and maybe the planned release date will get pushed back. Ultimately, I think it's been a positive early access launch so far and an ambitious project such as this definitely deserves our attention going forward. Now this title caught me by surprise when I started seeing it featured on Artosis' stream. Battle Aces is looking to rip up the script when it comes to competitive RTS gameplay, and I think they have some really innovative and interesting gameplay ideas. All matches are limited to 10 minutes in length, and there are several victory conditions including accruing points for being active on the map and securing objectives, and also the ultimate destruction of the enemy base, which is known as the core. So I think this really does sort of uh, encourage activity on the map and skirmishing, something sorely missing in games such as StarCraft 2. Another interesting somewhat novel mechanic is the idea of creating a unit deck before each match, including saving presets as well. And basically, you choose from a roster of over 45 units with more to come, and these are in tiers. So when you start the game, you can have your first tier units automatically building straight away. And as you tech up, further units from your pre-selected deck will become available. This really puts me in mind of more kind of uh, hard strategy games such as Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering. I think adds an extra layer of sort of preparation and tactical depth. The game is receiving a heavy push from RTS streamers such as Tasteless and Artosis, and it's no wonder considering that David Kim, well known to many StarCraft 2 players, is heavily involved in the development of this game. And your best bet at playing it right now is probably one of the, the key giveaways which happens regularly when Artosis is streaming the game. Otherwise it's in closed beta and you can try your luck by signing up. Infection Free Zone started life as a DLC story for the highly acclaimed 112 Operator game. Essentially, you set up your infection-free zone anywhere in the world thanks to OpenStreetMap's real-world data, and then you start building production facilities, defences, and everything to meet your needs. Your mission then is to defend your settlement against hordes of the infected, in addition to occasionally meeting living people who could be friendly or hostile. This game has a lot of fun, and the setting is really one that captures the imagination and has been hugely popular across various media, thinking of series such as The Walking Dead. The game launched in April of this year on Early Access, and we can expect it to be in this phase for about one year, they say, so potentially a 2025 release. Given that the Early Access version has received positive reviews and the success of 112 Operator, I've got high hopes for this title and I'll be following it closely. Developed by the team behind Planetary Annihilation, 
industrial annihilation looks to combine factory pipeline management elements made famous by games such as Factorio with the typical grand scale combat of a game like Supreme Commander or Total Annihilation. They're initially focusing on what's described as a galactic scale single player campaign and for now there's no mention of multiplayer. I think this is a very interesting combination of RTS subgenres, and so far it looks very polished. Considering that the CEO and director of the project is John Maver, who worked on the legendary Total Annihilation as a 2D graphics programmer, some fans will be hoping that this could be the spiritual successor to that legendary title. Initially there was a start engine funding round where they're looking for investors in the project. This has been followed by a Kickstarter campaign in August, and the game is now on Steam targeting a launch of early access this year. Rattenreich is an RTS set in what the developers describe as a fictional steampunk slash dieselpunk world, and it features a number of distinct factions doing battle against each other. The factions in question are anthropomorphic rats, mice, cockroaches and lizards. And what that word basically means is that they share some human characteristics, such as the ability to talk, drive a tank and engage in advanced military tactics. This will be a single player RTS and I think the main attraction is certainly going to be this unique universe that they've created. A lot of work is going into world building. The early access title even comes with a free comic book set in the Rattenreich universe. Even in the very earliest of preview versions, there was a lot of audio and visual polish on display and this is carried through to the recent early access launch. The game looks and sounds fantastic. I'm sorry to say that this initial launch has somewhat been hampered by a number of game-breaking bugs which have really made it difficult to play the game at all. So it looks and sounds fantastic, but the gameplay, it needs some serious work. This game certainly has a lot of potential if it can move past these initial sort of teething issues we have with gameplay. And I really, I like the unique setting. I like the fact that a lot of work has gone into really sort of world building and adding a lot of depth and character to the game. And I definitely think it's one to watch for the future. Another positive sign is that the developers have posted a very detailed roadmap which shows us the next four quarters what we can expect to see in the game and it's all very exciting, ranging from AI skirmishing to vehicle customization and various other new factions and features. Stormgate launched into free to play early access in August of 2024, but not before people who paid a bit extra could play it two weeks early, of course. The game had a well publicized Kickstarter campaign where it smashed its initial target of 100k and ended up raising more than 2 million dollars, making it the number one RTS Kickstarter of all time, surpassing Planetary Annihilation. Now I feel this game is trying to be all things to all people. It wants to be a competitive RTS with multiple multiplayer modes, it wants to be an epic single player campaign, and it has co-op, in addition to future plans for an editor. At the time of this initial release, I would say the consensus is that the standout element of the game is definitely the one versus one competitive multiplayer, and many pros from Age of Empires and Starcraft and the like are enjoying it right now. Now that mode is free to play, whereas large portions of the single player and co-op campaigns are behind a paywall, so you have to buy new episodes, new heroes to control, etc. And sadly the quality of these is just not up to scratch especially considering the amount of funding the game has received. And the fact you have to pay to access these has really kind of compounded the negativity. So what was maybe unrealistic hype and positivity from the community has largely given way to a lot of pessimism and negativity. In recent years, there have been a few notable examples of games which have been poorly received on launch and then have received numerous patches which have improved them into a state where they're highly regarded titles games such as No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk. Given this is only the early access launch, I think the Stormgate story has a lot of room to run and I believe people should approach it with an open mind. There's definitely fun to be had in the multiplayer as of right now and I think the other elements of the game we just have to wait and see. Zero Space is seen as a possible contender to be the competitive RTS title of the future. This doesn't do the ambition of the developers justice because they're planning for 1 vs 1, 3v3 multiplayer, practice vs AI, and an epic single player campaign with RPG style story arcs, think Mass Effect or Baldur's Gate. There are also plans for an epic co-op campaign known as Galactic Warfare, and this has been led by Maguro, who is a big name in the StarCraft 2 co-op scene, and I consider the co-op element of StarCraft 2 to be one of the highlights. 
the developers are making a number of interesting design choices in relation to gameplay. One such example is trying to do away with the idea of unnecessary APM syncs, or the idea of having to click repetitively in order to perform basic functions in game. We will see some repetitive elements automated and streamlined because the emphasis will be on the gameplay and the strategic element of battles as opposed to mechanical key pressing. Warcraft 3 style hero units are set to make a return and there also seems to be a heavy number of spellcasters which leads to very action packed battles with lots going on. The developers are also exploring ways to encourage activity on the map i.e. certain objectives and areas which are strategically important to hold or defend. The game has been through two pre-alpha testing phases, with the most recent finishing in March 2024. This follows an extremely successful Kickstarter campaign, where over $500,000 were raised. Players have been granted access to the game in phases. This corresponds to the level of backing they contributed to the Kickstarter campaign. I think it's fair to say that certain elements of the game are far further along the development cycle than others and much more polished, and I think the competitive multiplayer element is far more playable today than others. Having said this, I think that we should be able to expect, at least in 2025, some sort of open beta test phase where we can all access the multiplayer. Sanctuary Shattered Sun sits in an RTS subgenre populated by legendary titles such as Total Annihilation and Supreme Commander. The game is set to feature many mainstays of the subgenre, including strategic zoom, where you can focus on the smallest of skirmishes and then pan back to see the map in its entirety. You can also expect other mainstays, such as gigantic army sizes and hundreds of different types of units, in addition to advanced projectile modelling. Where this game looks to set itself apart from its contemporaries, such as BAR and other Spring Forks, is the fact it will be a standalone title with its own engine and client. Additionally, the developers are looking to innovate with various gameplay mechanics, one of which has been showcased was the ability to control the weather to your strategic advantage. We were shown how a body of water was frozen to allow an army to cross a river and then subsequently melted, preventing the opposition from following. Further to this, there's also terraforming, which is the idea of destroying or modifying the terrain, again for your strategic advantage. The game is currently on Patreon, and if you are a tier 5 Patreon member, then you can play the pre-alpha version of the game. Tier 4 will receive access to the closed beta when that begins. Nebulous Fleet Command is a 3D space combat sim RTS with incredible amounts of detail and depth to it. Currently the game is focusing on PvP as opposed to any kind of single player campaign and it's very much about the combat element as opposed to the economy of actually building your fleet of starships. The game launched on early access in 2022 to some very positive initial reviews which have since slipped more towards the mixed category. I think one reason for this is the fact that the developers have largely quote unquote abandoned the single player campaign and are focusing much more on the PvP element and given the game's incredible depth and complexity this makes it quite hard for new players to break in. The game has a great devlog which shares regular updates going into great detail in addition to hosting YouTube chats with the developers. The game was scheduled to be in early access for up to two years so we can potentially expect it to be released by the end of 2024. Now I think the game is great, I think there's a lot of detail to it, but that's also its Achilles heel because forcing people to only play multiplayer against a bunch of hardened veterans who are sometimes not the most welcoming makes it tough for the game to have a wider appeal. Sins of a Solar Empire 2 combines RTS elements with those of 4X i.e. Explore, Expand, Exploit, Exterminate. This is a sequel to the much-loved 2008 original, which is a spacefaring RTS on an epic scale, packed with detail. Speaking of epic, this game was initially an epic store exclusive, which served to limit the sort of reach of the game and the building excitement for it. Thankfully, in a recent development, the game was launched on Steam Early Access, available to buy and play today. And initial reviews have been very positive of this title. So far, the game is said to be very true to its original, in terms of having an epic scale, incredible amount of depth and attention to detail, and essentially this update has allowed it to really be free of the shackles, the engine limitations which kind of curtailed the scale of the original. Although build is having 4x elements to the game, these are considered to be very light and you can play it as a straight up RTS title. There have been some small gripes about things such as the user interface, although considering this is a brand new early access launch, 
think we can have high hopes that by the time of full release, this will be extremely polished and these small issues will have been resolved. Global Conflagration is a fast-paced RTS featuring three distinct factions. Again, it's inspired by 90s RTS classics such as Command & Conquer. Visually, the game is very striking, with over-the-top animations, giant explosions and very busy battles. The game is set to feature a number of modes, including single-player campaign set in an alternate future Europe, multiplayer with 1 vs 1, 2v2, 3v3 and 4v4, in addition to skirmish vs AI. So quite ambitious. Particularly ambitious when you consider that this is also a two-person development project. The game is currently on Steam Early Access since late 2023, although it's not currently available to buy and play. The expectation is for it to be in this phase for up to two years. There was a playable demo during Steam Next Fest in February of 2024, and I believe it was well received, although I didn't get a chance to play it myself. Dwarf is a classic style RTS with three distinct factions. In a throwback to 90s style graphics, the game features 2D sprites, though it does augment these with modern lighting techniques and other features. There has recently been a flurry of developer updates after a fairly long quiet period, and it turns out the team have been working on revamping all of the graphical elements. The game features single player in addition to online PvP, and looking at the game I think it really immediately reminds me of Command & Conquer Tiberian Sun, which is definitely not a bad thing. While not revolutionary, I think there's definitely a place for another fun, action-packed, explosive RTS title. The game has a Steam listing with a to-be-announced release date. They also run a Twitter account with regular dev updates, as well as a Patreon. Tier 3 and 4 pledges on Patreon get access to unit and asset polls, allowing them to shape the future design of the game. Despite not yet having an official release date, Immortal Gates of Pyre is looking like a very polished RTS. The game is set to feature 1 vs 1, 2v2, 3v3 and co-op game modes. There are currently two factions and the third is under development. While not attempting anything truly revolutionary gameplay wise, I do think the game is highly stylized and I'm a fan of the immortal units which are essentially godlike characters with five unique abilities, similar to something like Warcraft 3 with the hero units. It's clear that a real effort has gone into universe building and really adding to the mythos and lore of these immortal units. The game is currently in a closed alpha phase, although there have been regular themed stress test events. There was also a playtest between the 2nd and 4th of August, which was well received by gamers. I would estimate that the game's probably likely to come out in 2025. Red Chaos The Strict Order is an RTS very reminiscent of those 90s classics such as Command & Conquer. It appears to be taking very few risks when it comes to the gameplay mechanics which centre around resource collection, base building and finally constructing an army to defeat your opponents. Familiar too will be the interface design, as well as the thumping soundtrack and the voiceover, which is very reminiscent of 90s Command & Conquer. Where this game does look to differentiate itself is with a heavy focus on balance and trying to make multiple playstyles viable. The latest official video posted by the developers suggests the game is coming soon, which could mean the end of 2024. Tempest Rising looks to be a real throwback, reminiscent of titles such as Command & Conquer and of course Red Alert. In terms of the gameplay, I don't think they're taking any real risks here or trying to reinvent the wheel. It's very much your bread and butter, resource collection, constructing a base and then building units. The game is set to feature three asymmetrical factions, so attempting to recreate the success of titles such as Warcraft and Starcraft. The game is set to have two epic single player campaigns, complete with over the top cutscenes featuring larger than life characters. As a Command & Conquer fan, I found these to be very nostalgic to watch. In addition to single player, there will also be several multiplayer game modes supported by a chess ELO style matchmaking and ranking system. If you spend a bit of time trying this game, you'll immediately be thinking of titles such as Red Alert. It really has that kind of heavy metal, big explosion, sort of badass feel to it. And this is only heightened by the fact that we have industry legend Frank Kaplaki contributing to the soundtrack. Of course, he created tunes such as the famous Hellmarch. While perhaps not revolutionary, there's certainly room in the RTS universe for a banging, fun game like this, and is currently expected in late 2024 after a small delay while they focus on adding a bit more polish. There have been a number of playable demos, such as the one that was featured recently in TacticCon 2024, which was a Steam digital convention for strategy gaming.